I'm Jenny Rhodes. I work for the University of Maryland Extension. I'm the uh, county ag agent or extension educator for ag and natural resources. So welcome to our 28th uh, annual harvest breakfast. Uh, we have a exciting program lined up uh, for you today. So as you know, we're here to celebrate the harvest. And today, um, along with selling, celebrating the harvest, we're going to be raising money for the Maryland Food Bank, um, the Eastern Shore branch to be um, exact. You know, the Eastern Shore encompasses um, eight of the 21 counties of Maryland. And on the Eastern Shore, there are 45,000 individuals that are food insecure. So you might say, well, what is uh, food insecurity? So it's really the lack of reliable access to a sufficient quantity of affordable and nutritious food. So we are all very lucky, certainly, to be here um, this morning to celebrate the harvest. And I see the gentleman, Steve Schwab, is here from the Maryland Food Bank. So Steve, he's a director here on the Eastern Shore. So Steve, thanks for joining us. I know you had a little ways to come this morning. So um, let's get on. I'm going to introduce a few people. So Dr. Paul Rickard, here's, he's our Area Extension Director. Uh, he is, takes care of Queen Anne's County, uh, Kent County, and Cecil County. And of course, um, this day would not be possible without the staff that I work with. And uh, the ladies and one gentleman that I uh, work with in our office uh, do a phenomenal job. Um, to put that on, so I want to thank um, all of them. And you'll see them floating around. And then the volunteers that work in the kitchen, uh, Paul Gunther and his staff and Danny LeVan work hard, so when you go through the food line, make sure you say uh, thank you uh, to them. And then take a look on the back of your program. These are the collaborators that helped us uh, put this on today. So uh, the Chamber of Commerce, Farm Credit, QAC TV, George Harvey, and Ted are here, and they, I just can't say enough about what they do to help us educate people about agriculture. Uh, the Queens County um, FFA chapter is here, Farm Bureau Soil Conservation, Queens County Public Schools, and of course the uh, Maryland Food Bank. So thank you certainly to all those and to all that uh, donated here today. Uh, Casey Palmer is here. She is the chairperson of the Queens County uh, Chamber of Commerce. So Casey, thank you. And we thank all the, that the Chamber does, certainly for this county and many other counties. Uh, I am very excited um, of one person that is here today. We have the Dean of our college here, um, Dr. Craig Beiruti. So uh, very excited for him to come. I, in my 10 years, I don't think we've ever had a Dean here. So this, oh, is, well. this is very exciting <laughs> for me. So I have, uh, so I'm kind of a little nervous today. So if I act a little different, it's because uh, the Dean is here. <laughs> You know, you always got to make a good impression, or try to, anyway. So let me tell you a little bit uh, about our dean. So he was appointed to the Dean of the College of Ag and Natural Resources for the University of Maryland on November 1st, 2015. He's done a really good job. He's gotten out. He's meeting people. He wants to know, you know, what your concerns are. Um, and he knows what, he really knows what we do. Um, he's been involved in teaching, research, and extension for more than 35 years. Uh, he joined the University of Maryland from um, Colorado State University, where he served as the Dean of the College of Ag, um, Agricultural Science. He also worked as a Chief Administrator and an Academic Officer, and then he's worked in other colleges and kind of moved around a little bit, but his real love is agronomy, so I know the farmers will like to hear that. So I've asked the Dean if he would give us a few remarks before we eat. So, Dean? Let me move my stuff out of the way. Jenny, thank you. Yeah, I don't think any of us have ever seen Jenny nervous before. So that's a real surprise. Actually, it was really interesting. So I saw that the announcement for the, uh, the breakfast came across, I guess, all of our computers, right? We saw the nice invitation and all, and I looked at this. And I've only been on board for a couple of years. I didn't know that, that you actually put this on. And this is 28 years uh, and continuing to grow. So I emailed Jenny and said, uh, Jenny, I'd like to come to breakfast. I think I'll go ahead and be there. And, uh, and she wrote back and she said, that'd be great. Would you like to make a few remarks? <laughs> I said, well, no. I mean, that, all I want to do is, is shake hands and have breakfast. And, and, and then uh, I kind of rethought that a little bit <laughs> and, uh, and took her up on that invitation. Um, and I'm going to make this fairly brief because obviously our stomachs are growling and, and it's all about uh, agriculture and the celebration of agriculture and the whole aspect of, of celebrating the, the overall harvest as well. 
much of what we do in agriculture uh, certainly depends upon the partnership that we have between institutions like ours, the Land Grant University, and the citizens of our respective states. And we take that very, very seriously at the University of Maryland. And I think that's really borne out by a number of the folks that are here that you know very, very well. Jennifer, or Jenny, sorry. Uh, Rachel, uh, many of our extension folks, uh, past and present and, and certainly in the future as well. We have an equal commitment to that at the university. In fact, uh, yesterday I uh, just finished interviewing the last of three candidates for our ag education program. And so we're investing more effort, more resources into agricultural education on campus so that we can begin educating and training uh, the next generation of agricultural teachers that will remain here within Maryland and train our and educate uh, the next generation of agricultural industry folks, the farmers, the, the, those who are in the food system and the like. And so we're very, very excited about that as well. I was reading the poster about agricultural awareness. I think you're going to be uh, talking about that a little bit later. The fact is, is that we really need to be reaching those kids at the middle school level to talk to them about agriculture, the importance that agriculture has to their everyday lives, uh, and the fact that agriculture in all of its different ways uh, is an outstanding career for these young people. And I think that we all have to be working very, very closely together in order to make that happen, make sure that we have a succession plan so that there are those that will follow us in the future who will continue to make sure that we have a safe and secure food system uh, and that we have one that we know that, that every time we sit at the table like we do today, we're blessed by not worrying where our food is coming from, but we always know that we have access to that. We want to always make sure that we have access to food and that we have those who are willing to spend the time producing that food for us as well. And I think that that's what's bringing us all together uh, in addition to that. I do want to uh, do a huge shout out for extension. You know, as a land grant university, we have three missions. Uh, formal education, which is really the academic side of things that occurs in the classroom. We do our research, both in the laboratories and in the field. But it's extension, really, that makes things happen. That, I think, is the energy that, that really brings together our institutions with those who really seek the knowledge. And the, it's, it's the passion of our extension folks folks that, uh, that uh, I have been so impressed with over the last two years. It's the fact that they are incredibly competent, and it's the fact that they live and work and breathe and interact with those in their respective communities, and I think that that brings an awful lot of credibility uh, as well. We recently met, uh, I think Don Webster is here, and myself and a few others met recently with the undersecretary of uh, one of the agricultural uh, agencies in Mexico and the ambassador of Mexico, specifically to talk about extension and how is it that extension is, is uh, so successful in Maryland and can they try to duplicate that in Mexico because they're having a real tough time in terms of getting information out to the general public. We see this time and time again around the United or around the world that, that various countries want to emulate what our extension programs here are in the United States and in particular in Maryland. I just had an opportunity uh, just a few days ago to go up on the hill in Washington, D.C. Believe me, I'd rather be here on the Eastern Shore than over in Washington, D.C. But we had an opportunity to visit with the legislative aides of our U.S. Senators, um, Cardin and uh, Van Hollen, to educate them specifically about extension because I think that they had, uh, although they have a strong understanding about extension, I don't think that they had a real complete understanding about all the impact that we make uh, and, and all the intellectual horsepower that goes into that as well, working with our youth, working with our, our seniors, working with everybody in between, our agricultural producers and so forth. Let me just read to you what I have on the back of my, uh, my business card uh, because this is something, this is our rooftop statement and it's something that I think really reflects the way that the university views themselves, certainly our college. We embody the university's land grant mission and that's certainly foremost on our minds that we are land grant, we are your institution. So we, we take a lot of, uh, um, uh, I guess we're very serious about the responsibility that you've given us in order to, to uh, exemplify the land grant mission. We embody the university's land grant mission with a commitment to eliminate hunger, 
to preserve our natural resources, to improve quality of life, and to empower the next generation through world-class education. I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you so much for, uh, for inviting me and, and for doing this and celebrating agriculture, for celebrating our youth. These are the, the individuals who will be uh, following in our footsteps, and I think that we're in outstanding hands as well. Uh, and thank you for the support that you provide the university in particular uh, for allowing us through extension to be part of your communities and be part of your lives and, and to, to help you uh, uh, advance your lives and livelihoods as well. Thank you. So I'm going to call up our officer team uh, from Queens County High School FFA and I have uh, Jen Gannon is our uh, president. You'll be hearing from her a little later. Um, Lynn Rose is our secretary, uh, Peter Arnold is our vice president, and um, well Jen, I guess you're not going to do, we'll have you later, but I'll introduce you. Um, and then um, Colton is our, our sentinel, so we'll let you guys do the, they're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance, the 4-H Pledge, and uh, Invocation. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, my health to better living, for my club, my community, in my country, in my world. If we could please bow our heads in an attitude of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day and opportunity you have given us to gather together to celebrate the 2017 harvest season. We thank you for the hands of those that have prepared this meal and those who have taken the time and organized this event. As we reflect on this past harvest, let us be grateful for all we have. We ask that you be with us as we depart and bless this food to our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's um, give a round to the help in the kitchen, our volunteers, because it was a, certainly a, a wonderful breakfast. So I've got some more people that I want to introduce. Um, Dr. Jim Hansen is here. Jim Hansen is our Associate Dean, Associate Director of Extension. Jim, thanks for being here. Some of you um, may have seen him before. He was actually Paul Gunther's boss for a while. <laughs> so thank you, Jim, for coming. Um, let's see, at the head table, I've got two, um, Miss Queen Anne's County uh, Agriculture. Megan Jackson is here from Farm Bureau. And we have our little miss, Willow Winterstein, is here. So Willow has to leave. She has a science project to uh, present. So she'll be uh, slipping out um, shortly. Um, now, you know, I can't introduce everybody, so I do this kind of in segments. So all the farmers in the county um, are in here. Please stand. Might not be from the county, but all farmers stand. So thank you all very much for what you do. Now, you know, a lot of us um, share a lot of different hats. So if you're a chamber member, uh, stand, please. So thank you to all the chamber members, certainly, uh, for what you do. How about if you work for the government? Stand up. Yeah, you work for the government. There you go. Thank you for all you do. Uh, how about our master gardeners? Our master gardeners have worked. They helped to bring some of the greens in. We've got a couple master gardeners here. Where are they? Thank you for what you do. Our master gardeners get uh, formal training, and their job is to go out into the community and take uh, our extension and research-based information out. How about any nonprofit? I know we've got some nonprofit uh, organizations here today, too. So thank you all for you, what you do. Uh, how about our Extension Advisory Council? So this is the council that uh, kind of works for extension, and they kind of help us to direct where our programs may go. Mark, Mark, where's Ann? Ann's back here somewhere. Oh, Ann's back there. Okay, our president, Ann um, Snappinger, is here. Of our, and how about our homemakers? I know we have a, a few homemakers that are here today. Where's Cookie? I did see her. There's a couple of them that are here today. So we don't. There they are. So sorry, I was looking to the back. Um, 
we don't hear much about our homemakers anymore, but they were certainly um, very important in, in the start of extension. And we still have, gosh, how many clubs, I think? Maybe seven or eight left in our county? Yeah, eight counties, um, groups of homemakers that still meet and certainly do a lot uh, for our fair. And then our commissioners. So I have, we have Jack Wilson, Mark Anderson, Jim Moran, and Stevie Wilson. So if you guys would please stand up. So thank you to our, our county commissioners. You know, they work really hard. We in our county, our county government owns a lot of ag land, and they really uh, work to preserve that ag land and make sure that uh, farmers are on that land, that we're growing corn, wheat, and soybeans, and we're doing all the best management practices. So thank you for all you do. Uh, we have our state farm service agency D director, Jim Eichhorst. Where's Jim? Jim, thanks for coming. Uh, we have our very own Han Schmidt. So Han uh, works for the Maryland Department of Ag. <laughs> We're very proud. Hans is from our, Hans is our assistant secretary for resource conservation and he does a uh, a lot of work and we're very proud of what Hans does and for him to represent um, our county. So I think, oh, I did, where's Steve? Steve Orange was here, where's Steve? Oh, there's Steve, Steve's our delegate. So Steve, thank you um, for all that you do. <clears throat> and I hope that I don't have to come to Annapolis and see you a lot this year. Because <laughs> we always seem to spend a lot of time in Annapolis, but we do what we have to do. So I think I have every, I hope I haven't left anyone out, but. Everybody is certainly uh, important uh, for what we do in this county, and we certainly appreciate that very much. So I get to give my little recap of ag. You know, my job, the chamber says, we want to know what's going, in, going on in the county of, with agriculture. So as you know, farmers start out in the winter. Time is pretty busy. They're putting away equipment. They're getting their nutrient management credits. They're getting their pesticide credits. And so it seems to be a pretty big, busy time for everybody. Uh, last February, I ha was asked to travel to Kentucky and uh, got to travel around Kentucky and talk with farmers there about some of their, what we do here with best management practices and nutrient management. We told them, I went with um, Jonathan Quinn, he's a farmer from Cecil County, and we told them that farming in Maryland is like farming in a crime scene. You have to document everything you do and you have to be accountable for everything that you do. And that's not always a bad thing. Uh, so we talked a lot about the Chesapeake Bay and um, we are very fortunate that we do um, get a lot of cost share money and we get a lot of technical service from our uh, farm service agency our natural resource conservation and our soil conservation um, offices. Our Women in Ag Conference, Shannon Dill, my colleague in Talba County, we work uh, with the Mid-Atlantic uh, Women in Ag Conference. Jenny Schmidt's here, she's been one of our speakers. So. Um, we work with that. We had a record attendance this year of uh, 200 ladies, a few gentlemen. We let a few gentlemen in. We had agronomy day is held here um, each year. We had about 250 uh, people in attendance of agronomy day, so farmers can get the latest research uh, from the from the university, from the research stations, and we get to bring the specialists out and uh, works works very well. We hosted some organic grain uh, roundtable discussions all over Delmarva. So you know, I only not work in uh, Maryland, we kind of don't know that line between um, Delaware and Virginia sometimes because we, we, sometimes we would like to really be our own state dean. We would like to really be Delmarva, but you know, we haven't really worked that out yet. Um, and then uh, Annie's project, that's a women in ag uh, program to empower uh, farm women. We know that there's a lot of farm women we created, Shannon and I. Um, the first in the nation, Annie's project, uh, women managing commercial poultry. Um, we've edu educated over 50 women, um, really looking at the production side and the financial side of commercial poultry. And then you're going to hear about today our first um, Ag Awareness Day. We uh, worked really hard to bring this uh, together with over 60 volunteers it took to put this two-day event on. So you'll hear a little bit about that. And then we got into um, corn planting. Uh, corn went in the ground pretty good um, early, and we got some early emergence of corn, and then we had some cold... Um, wet, um, rainy, so we had a little delay, but then um, we had some replanting. Same with soybeans. Um, soybeans, we couldn't get soybeans out of the ground. We probably had more soybeans replanted uh, than corn uh, this year. And then we went um, into May. I was honored by Chesapeake um, College to be um, the Pride of the Peak uh, recipient, and this year um, we have 
a new um, ag program. Dr. Nicole uh, Fellerino um, heads up that. She's a graduate, PhD student from the University of Maryland. She does a great job. We raised $32,000 uh, for children, or students, I should say, of any age um, for Chesapeake College. So we are um, very excited about that. I am a graduate of Chesapeake College, so are um, both of my sons. We all went on to the University of Maryland, of course. But um, it's a great, we are very, um, Chesapeake College is uh, just a great community um, advocate for us, not only education, but events and a, a lot of other things. So we're very, um, very excited and very happy um, for, for what they're doing and really moving ahead, especially with the ag program. Uh, Chris Johnson, our 4-H agent, and Rachel, our horticulture agent, and Sally, our um, assistant 4-H agent. We work every year with Bay Days at, at Canary Elementary School. We work to teach um, third, fourth, fifth graders about best management practices. We do a farmer's market with them. We do some uh, growing with grains. We talk about bees. We do a little bit of everything with them. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then in the middle of summer, Francis Breeding retires on me. So many of you know um, Francis. Francis was uh, my uh, right hand. I have to tell you that I'm really lost without him. So we're working, hopefully, to get um, that position uh, filled. Uh, we do a lot in our county, so it's really important that you know if I'm not there, that somebody is there um, to to help uh, the clientele that walk in. We have lots of uh, walk-in clientele. It seemed like um, this year was, um, oh, let me go back. I forgot the county fair. My favorite week of the year, the county fair. Um, we had record attendance uh, at the fair uh, this year. The weather was great. And it's just, uh, I can't tell you how much I love the county fair. Not growing up here, but just watching, my favorite part is watching the, um, the young 4-Hers and the interaction. And then you know what another part is really, is see the 4-Hers that come back to watch the young kids that show. So that um, so we have a really good 4-H program here. We're very blessed with all the volunteers that um, work with that. And then we got into uh, corn harvest. It seemed like long harvest uh, this year for some reason. I think so. Yeah. So, uh, but really, we were very blessed with exceptional yields, um, low grain prices. Unfortunately, we're looking at probably some record low prices and um, supply and demand. You know that. That moves that. So Chad's over there shaking his head. So we're, we'll see if we have any rallies in the market. But um, Chad and his group at Nagel Farm do a really good farm service, do a really good job working with farmers and partnering with, with us. So we thank them for that. Um, a lot of you see cover crop growing. Um, Queen Anne's County, congratulations to all the farmers. We, are the, um, we have the most acres in the whole state of, of cover crops. So if you see anything gr green growing in the field, uh, that's cover crop out there. So cover crop. Um, helps us to take up excess nutrients, even though I don't think there was much left this year because we had phenomenal yields, but also helps with uh, soil health and also erosion and lots of other things. So congratulations to that. Um, last but um, not least, um, this year we lost um, some, some really icons in the ag world um, that just did a lot um, for this um, community and for this county. One was Mr. Walter Schmidt, who would always sit over here to the left side of the room every year. And uh, we will miss him dearly. Um, he just did so much for the county. And I could always count on him if I needed something. We did farm tours and lots of um, different things. Uh, Mr. Bill Riggs was a longtime farmer and my neighbor. He was a forny, former um, county commissioner, passed away. And then also Miss Jean Haymaker. She was the secretary at our office for I don't even know how many years, a long time. And she was also secretary of this um, county fair, so they will certainly um, be missed. And I'm sure there's other ones that I have probably missed, but so let's just have a little um, moment of silence to think about the loved ones that we've lost this year. Okay, thank you. All right, so we are gonna move on to our program, and we're gonna talk, I have a panel that's gonna talk to us about uh, ag awareness. First thing we're going to show, uh, Rachel, if you'll get, we, um, like I said, we work with uh, QATV, um, George Harvey and his staff a lot, and they really help us get the message out about uh, ag education. So let's tee that up and see if that'll, so that'll give us a start. You want to come out? Yeah. This is a she though, right? You didn't even correct me, so I appreciate you not calling me dumb. 
We're here for Agricultural Awareness Day. As you can see, there are a lot of kids learning all about different things. What are some of the things we can find here, Jennifer? We can find lots of good things here today. <laughs> so we have five stations. All the um, seventh graders will be traveling to each station. One is called Our Future. They are learning about technology and tractors, how tractors can uh, drive themselves. They're learning about the GPS and the technology. And then we have the county is here with our UAV or drone, as it's called. Um, they did fly the drone earlier um, last month, but it's a little nasty today, so unfortunately the kids aren't going to see the drone. They're learning about corn, wheat, and soybeans. Queens County is the number one producer of corn and soybeans in the state. Did you know that? I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, so we have the state FFA officers here, so they're um, doing some icebreakers with them, just kind of burning off some of that, you know, energy. Right, and have a little fun. Yeah, so, so you'll see them down there. They're having a good time. Then um, from there, they'll move into aquaculture is inside, so we have Don Webster and Shannon Hood from the University of Maryland. They work in home. Horn Point. Then from there, we're going to move to the um, nursery. We have nursery and landscape in this building. John, um, George Mayo from Maryland Ag Education Foundation is here teaching about that. And then from there, they'll move into the main uh, pavilion. They're going to learn about vegetables, vegetable production. Um, Allison Howard is here from uh, Homestead Farms, and Godfrey's Farms from Saldersville is here. And oh, Arnold Farms from up near Chestertown is here. And then the, when the kids get done learning, they're actually going to um, pot a cucumber cucumber plant. So they're going to plant the seed and then they're going to take that home and grow it. Awesome. So that'll be fun. The last one is animals. So we have pigs, we have goats, we have sheep, we have a horse, uh, we have beef cows, we have a dairy cow, and we have two different size uh, chickens. And each one of the uh, FFA members, a couple of them work together and there's, you'll see there's a poster board. So they research facts about each industry so we could teach the kids about that. And we have some specialists here from uh, the University of Maryland too to, to teach the kids. So that's an exciting day. So I think I'm going to take a tour around now, okay. see if I can learn some okay. things. Okay. Maybe interview a, a beef cow. You think you can interview them? Let I hope so. Let, let me know how you make out with them. I will. I'll let you know. I really, I like to talk to the chickens, so maybe you should try talking to them. I'll get them all. <laughs> okay. With Jen and her horse, Cat. Not her cat horse. This is her horse, Cat, with a K. Specific instructions. So what kind of horse is this? Cat's an American quarter horse. That means nothing to me, but it sounds pretty cool. What do you think about Jen? <gasps> cat! That yeah, was funny, though. That's funny. Cat's got a sense of humor. So we're here with Ellie the cow. She's a dairy cow. Hey, dairy cow, how do you feel about these beef cows? I know, right? Like, they can't do nothing right. Al's an expert. You see what I did there? Ah, oh, I got Al to laugh. So Al, which ones are the chicken nuggets and which ones are the chicken breasts? They're all chicken nuggets and chicken breasts. They're all chicken nuggets. So are you raising these to be a food? Yep, they're meat chickens. Nice, so we're gonna eat these chickens. Name all the chickens real fast, go. Chicken nuggets, quesadilla, <laughs> Peter, That's okay. Becky. Right, Becky. I, I recognize Becky anywhere. Cool. Well, thank you for showing me all your nugget chickens, especially Becky. I'm surrounded right now. They're scared to be on camera, but I'm more scared of them. So what did we learn today? Um, that chickens lay different color eggs. They do do that. What's your favorite animal so far? Uh, pig. <laughs> Pig, pig, you have to think about it too. Like that's good. Like you really, the pigs support us. Bacon, bacon, bacon. Bacon. I think they had different things in mind when they were born than being your food, though. So we got dairy cows and we got beef cows. Which one do you like more? Beef cows. Yeah. What do cows drink? <laughs> Water. Good. Yeah. Who'd you vote for? <laughs> Bad move. <laughs> so that's just a, a little snippet. I thought it would be I'll give George and his uh, group. Um, so that that kind of brings it more to reality, so you can kind of see. So I'm going to introduce our whole panel at one time, and I'll let them um, come up. So first we have um, Janelle. Janelle Eck is the daughter of Mark and Vicki Eck. Um, they own Mayview Farms um, in Ingleside. Currently, Janelle is uh, attending University of Delaware and working on a double major in communication and agriculture. She worked a lot. I can't tell you how much she did for Ag Awareness. This is the power of an intern, the dean. This is the, our intern. Janelle was our intern. And we have a new intern program coming out. But this, this is the power of an intern. We cannot, I just cannot, and all of us cannot do everything. So when you get an intern in and she has great ideas and she moved forward, so... Um, she just did a uh, great job. And Janelle was also uh, Miss Maryland Agriculture in 2015. So 
um, she's traveled around the state and done a lot of different things. And then next, um, Jennifer Gannon will talk. She's a daughter of Tom and Do Dottie Gannon. They live um, outside of Star. You know where Star, Maryland is. <laughs> um, they own and operate a uh, grain and hog farm. Uh, Jen works part-time at Southern State. She's a senior at Queens County High School. Um, she's been very busy. She's involved in 4-H with her horse project and been president of um, Queen Anne's County FFA chapter for the last two years. And then Michael Page. Michael is the superintendent, um, or supervisor, I'm sorry, of instruction of, yeah, superintendent. Is that where you want to be? Okay. I'll just put a plug in for you there. Uh, he's a supervisor of instruction of science education at the Board of Education um, in Queen Anne's County. Michael was really the link that we needed. Um, to get ag awareness today and Janelle and I talked and we were really worried about how in the world are we going to get the Board of Ed to do this. Well, uh, Michael was right on board and um, we just did some straight sailing after that. So thank you, Michael, for that. He said his goal was to ensure all students understand the importance of agriculture and the rich heritage of this community. Michael says that as a new member of this community, my family and I have found this experience to be incredibly welcoming and educational. It's wonderful to see how involved the agriculture community is in supporting the educational growth of children. So we'll let them come up and give a little snippet about um, their involvement of Ag Awareness Day. Okay. All right, so while serving as the Queen Anne's County Young Farmer Secretary, um, Jessica Clark, who was our agriculture education chair at the time, presented an idea to have an ag day at school so that we could, as young farmers, bring our animals and just show the kids about agriculture. So I took this idea to Jenny while serving as the intern, and I was like, how can we make this happen? So Jenny quickly put into action of what we were going to do and the process of how to have our ag day. So we quickly created a committee representing the different areas of agriculture, as well as the different organizations and the Board of Education. Um, next, we were able to develop a plan that fit the school curriculum while teaching all seventh graders across the county about agriculture and the career opportunities. We teamed up with 4-H and FFA to promote our youth organizations and hope to grow our um, membership in those programs. We reached over 600 students and parents who were encouraged to attend, as well as the seventh grade teachers. On the 24th of April, we had Sellersville and Centerville Middle School attend, and on the 25th, we had Stevensville and Mattapique. We also had the Chestertown Christian Academy, which brought seven students to Agriculture Awareness Day. So please stand if your name is called. At our animal farm station, Jessica Clark talked about the different animals and the byproducts they produced. And the students were able to walk around and visit all the animals that were provided by the 4-Hers, the FFA members, and the young farmers. They all stayed throughout the event to answer questions and to talk to the students about the animals and the organizations that they represent. At the Green Station, students were able to learn about the nursery and landscaping industry by George Mayo with the Maryland Agriculture Education Foundation, as well as the produce industry by Allison Howard and Ashley Genova. They talked about the difference in organic and conventional, and the students were able to get their hands dirty by planting cucumbers in the direction of Peter Arnold with the FFA. At the technology station, students learned about genetically modified organisms while creating a grain jar with the Maryland grain producers and many other volunteers. Education about the equipment that we use and all they have to offer was done by Mr. John Draper. And we learned how, to, um, how, a how a drone can impact agriculture by our county GSI coordinator, Mr. Sam Stanton, and with his assistant, Tyler Pease. At the aquaculture station, Don Webster and Shannon Hood with the Y Research and Education Center taught the students about aquaculture as the others taught the students about aquaculture as a whole while showing the students that the equipment they use Students were also able to hold oysters and were able to see how oysters play a crucial role in cleaning our bay. Lastly, students expanded their knowledge about the bee industry by Mr. Mike Embry. Thank you to each of you who played a crucial part in educating our students. We had one, over 100 volunteers who helped out during the day, from working at the stations to checking volunteers in to organizing shirts 
to keeping the water jugs filled, and everything that you wouldn't think to think that you need someone for. Um, so if you were a volunteer for our first Agriculture Awareness Day, could you please stand? Thank you. And I said first because as of Tuesday, we had our first meeting for our second Agriculture Awareness Day. Um, so if you're interested, please let us know. One struggle that we came across last year was funding. After our first meeting, we applied for many grants and sent out letters to businesses across the county. Our $1,000 sponsors or more were the grain producers, our Queen Anne's County Farm Bureau, the county commissioners, Freeman Seed, and Purdue Farms. The funding issue was mainly because we spent $10,000 to get a charter company to use school buses to get the students to and from the 4-H park. This is an issue we're looking into fixing to minimize the cost, but we also encourage you all to reach out and support us so that we can educate our future. If you're interested to not only monetarily helping, but being a volunteer for our next Ag Day, any little bit could help. If it's setting up the weekend before working at the event, it would be appreciated. Anyone who stood up, you can talk to us about it. And um, Donna also has papers by that front table or with her with contact information as well. Um, so, and she, and she has her shirt on that we gave to all of our students. Thank you all for your time and commitment to agriculture. We'd like to see you over the next year helping with Ag Day. This past year, I, along with the rest of our 2016 officer team, had the opportunity to sit on the Agriculture Awareness Day Committee. Through this committee, um, our officers were involved in decision making for the day. And then we also brought like a kid's perspective to the group almost. Um, over the two days, FFA members were brought to the 4-H park to help. Students' roles in the day varied from leading groups around the park, bringing their livestock animals out, and educating the um, seventh graders themselves about their projects. When students got off the bus for the day, they already had their chaperones and their teachers, but FFA kids went along with them to help answer any questions that maybe the parents or the chaperones couldn't help answer. Um, FFA members brought out their own animals, so they brought horses, dairy cows, and goats. In Mr. Stokes' animal science classes, we had the opportunity to do research. Through this research, we made posters like you saw in the video. And on the posters, we put information pertaining to animal health, care, history, and even fun facts like Ms. Donna just said. Um, so for the kids that are more interested in agronomy from our chapter, like Peter and Colton down there, they helped the kids plant cucumber seeds, right? Which they could take home to their families and watch grow, which was a cool thing. So it was a great experience and it was fun. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I want to thank you all for having me here today. I'd like to quickly recognize two of my colleagues from the Queen Anne's County Board of Education who have helped make Agricultural Awareness Day possible, Ms. Janet Pauls. And Mr. Greg Paluski. And Mr. Paluski is here representing Dr. Kane, our superintendent. And she sends their best wishes, and uh, she had a prior arrangement that uh, she couldn't be here today. Uh, in, in my few years as a Queen Anne's County resident, I have been absolutely amazed by the commitment of our farmers, our community members, and the Board of Education to have the well-being and the education of our children. Through a partnership of all three, we were able to have our first annual Agricultural Awareness Day and it was absolutely amazing. Our instructional staff, students, and parents in attendance provided us with wonderful feedback and commendations on the, the experiences they received. They felt great connection to the food that brings them nu nutrients and the people that work tirelessly to provide it. They developed a deeper understanding of our agricultural history and the techno technological future that awaits. And most of all, they were all, they were more prepared as informed citizens to sustain a happy and healthy 
way of life. I want to personally thank those involved in the creation of and the implementation of the first Agricultural Awareness Day, especially Ms. Jenny Rhodes, thank you, and Ms. Janelle Eck, thank you, and our Queen Anne's County 4-H Club. Thank you all very much for your hard work. And FFA. NFFA. What did I say? 4-H, 4-H, NFFA. <laughs> Sorry, get them mixed up. I'm, I'm all new. It's all new to me. These partnerships are essential to the well-rounded education of our children, and I look forward to this partnership again and, an agriculture, and, and our next Agriculture Awareness Day. Thank you very much. So that gives you just a little snippet of uh, Ag Awareness Day. And as Janelle said, we're always looking for volunteers. Like she said, it took um, 100 volunteers to, to pull this off in, in two days. So we've, we started our, um, we're down the road uh, for our first, uh, our second annual uh, Ag Awareness Day. And we're working on dates now. So we'll, we'll keep everybody informed. So, so uh, see a couple closing uh, comments. There are six arrangements in the middle of the table. Look on your placemat. If you have a sticker on your placemat, you can get, it should be right on the front of your placemat. If you see it, you'll get one of the arrangements. If you have a Santa Claus, you get the arrangement up here um, at the uh, front of the table. Okay. Um, okay, you can fix that, Rachel. You can fix that. So. Um, so anyway, thank you to um, Sue. Um, Sue's in the back. Sue did all of our decorations. Sue, come back in here. Come on. She's, Sue did all of our decorations for us. So she does uh, a wonderful job. Let's see. So now we have to, Steve, you want to come forward to the, um, for our presentation? So Steve, how much money do you think we raised? Oh man, whatever it is, we're appreciative. Oh, so. Twenty-two hundred dollars wow. this morning! Yay! Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I will. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Um, um, this is the second year I've been here, um, and uh, your generosity over always overwhelms us. You know, I think uh, I worked in ag for thirty-three years before I retired from Purdue and uh, stayed involved with the food bank. And you know, ag always had a big heart. I think I said that last year. You know, this year reminds me, we're all in the same business between the food bank. You guys grow it, and we want to make sure it gets distributed to those folks in need. And uh, the partnership that I think uh, between ag and between the Maryland Food Bank is, is amazing. It's always, it always amazes me how, how generous people on the shore are, but especially how generous folks in ag are. And uh, Dr. Baruti reminded me of something about you know education. Now, this whole this is all about education, especially today with the Ag Education Awareness Day that you had um, in Queen Anne's County. You're blessed with only 6.8 percent of the population being food insecure. That's the lowest in the eight Eastern Shore counties that the Maryland Food Bank of the Eastern Shore serves. That's the best. That still means that 3,300 3, folks a day don't know where one of their meals is coming from in Queen Anne's County. So it's still an awful lot of people. The worst statistic is one in four kids in Queen Anne's County are food insecure. And it's very tough to learn, and it's very tough to get out of that cycle with a, with a, a hunger burning in your belly every morning. So you all need to really uh, pat yourselves in the back for all your efforts in not only educating folks about ag, but in helping ensure that uh, we have the food that we can help distribute to those kids so they do get a good good start on a day and a good start in education. Amy Cauley would have been here today. I know you would have much rather seen and heard from her rather than me, but she's a little under the weather and wanted me to send everybody her thanks as well. She's our Farm to Food Bank coordinator, and most of you know her real well. So again, thanks. So much appreciated. Well, thank you all very much. Uh, your generosity uh, is just certainly amazing. So we're going to wrap up, and I just want to say thank you um, for what each and every one of you do. It's just so important uh, to our community and really helps me to make uh, my job uh, much easier. I know there's lots of different things going on in Centerville, so please go out and support our local business. It's, it's uh, very important. And everyone, please have a very blessed Christmas, and thanks for coming. Thank you.